It's interesting how do-it-yourself projects and the idea of doing it yourself has really infiltrated our society. I think, especially with YouTube, you can look up how to do anything. You can learn anything. Every, everything's available to you. And we get this sense that we can really do anything and everything because we can learn about anything through the internet. But what's interesting is, is we, I start to see that more and more when it comes to spirituality. People tend to think of spirituality and their spiritual beliefs as like a do-it-yourself project. Like, I wanna figure out my own spiritual beliefs on my time, on my terms. I want ownership of it. I want control of it. I want customization of it. And I think there's a sense where our society believes do-it-yourself spirituality is true because it's the way to be most authentic to who you are. It's the most, it's a way to be most authentic to who you are. But what we haven't really wrestled with is how much of our consumer culture affects our approach to spirituality. How much of what we actually think we know about ourselves is influenced by what we see online. Tara Isabella Burton is a scholar who writes about culture and spirituality in America. And she calls this do-it-yourself spirituality, she calls it remixed religion. People kind of look at different religions and they pull different things out of different religions, different concepts, different figures, and they kind of mash it all together and remix it and say, this is what I believe. In her book, Strange Rites, New Religions for a Godless World, Tara Isabella Burton says, today's remixed reject authority, institution, creed, and moral universalism. They value intuition, personal feeling, and experiences. In other words, people think about spirituality as what comes from me, not what you tell me. They demand to rewrite their own scripts about how the universe and human beings operate, shaped by the twin forces of a creative, communicative, communicative internet and consumer capitalism. Today's remix don't want to receive doctrine to assent automatically to a creed they want to choose, they want to do it themselves, and more often than not, purchase the spiritual path that feels more authentic, more meaningful to them. Now, some of you hear, the, hear that and they go, yeah, that's exactly right. That's how our culture thinks about spirituality. That's even how most Christians think about spirituality. I, I like to go through the scriptures and find the things that seem to suit me rather than being told what should I should adjust for. That's the, that's the air of our culture. But the challenge with that approach to spirituality, the challenge was taking this do-it-yourself approach and applying it to our, to our approach to spirituality is the first one is that it assumes that you know yourself best. It assumes that you know yourself best. And because you assume you know yourself best, you assume you know what's best for you. And then thirdly, because you assume you know what's you know yourself best, you know what's best for you, you assume that you're the best one to take care of yourself. But here's the problem. As we explore spirituality, one of the things I've found is my biggest problem is myself. Like, have you ever got to that point in your life where you realize like your biggest problems aren't out there, your biggest problems are you and the choices that you make? And do-it-yourself spirituality doesn't take into account the fact that we might not know ourselves best, that we might not actually know what's best for ourselves, and that we actually might not be the person with our best interests in mind. We often have an idealized version of ourselves. We rewrite the story when we make big mistakes so that we're not at fault. We never really think about how our desires actually lead us into dark places. And we're never really aware of what we don't know. Right now, none of us knows what we don't know. And so when we go, I'm gonna do spirituality myself, we enter in thinking we're empowered, but we're really heading towards messing this spirituality project up. Because if we mess it up, there's no one to blame but us. I find it comforting that Jesus steps on the scene and says, that's not how things work. I'm here. And Jesus says to you, I know you best. 
I know what's best for you. And I'm the best one to care for you. And that's really the basis of Christian spirituality. I'm not best for me. Jesus is best for me. I don't know myself best. He knows me best. And therefore, he knows what's best for me. The challenge is the way that Jesus describes this is the image of sheep. And that's not a very flattering thing that Jesus calls us sheep. But it's realistic. And if we're able to, to, to function and think about spirituality with Jesus as a shepherd and us as a sheep, it actually makes room for how flawed we really are. It actually doesn't put all the pressure on ourselves to do it ourselves and get it right. Rather, the pressure is on him and all we have to do is follow him. 